Hi, I'm Dave Robinson. Welcome to another screencast we'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, this data comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, an amazing weekly data project in R, run by the R for Data Science Learning Community. And as usual, if you're tuning in live, please do feel free to join in, set a chat, say hi, and especially as we go uh, ask questions and give ideas, visualizations, and analyses that I might not think of. It's one of my favorite parts of doing these screencasts live. So let's see what we have this week. It's Netflix titles. Netflix is the titles or is it like more data? It's, yes, okay, it looks like it's a list of TV shows and, and movies available on Netflix as of 2019. Uh, all right, and could integrate with other data sets. All right, so that this is going to be, um, I think it's going to be fun. So the, um, uh, let's, let's read in the data. So let's do library, tid let's do, um, tidy, Tuesday R, use tidy template, create for today. I usually do a few modifications first. I do a lot, I have to create my own, um, uh, I really should create my own template, shouldn't I? Some of the things I like, I like, let's see. Let's look at this data, all right. The names are in snake case and the year, the year is a year, show ID starts with an S, that's fine, and it has type and, let me count type, Cool, let me try counting year, uh, not year, it's release year. Okay, it's numbers and, uh, and I also like, I'm just gonna do a little bit of, of checking in if I do min release year, max release year. This is a clean data set, great. I think, did they say it came from Kaggle? Yes, it came from Kaggle, from Kaggle. Kaggle. All right, and the, um, let's, uh, let's uh, do it. So let's do Netflix titles is TT Netflix titles, all right, and that's the main data set. All right, and we have 7,700, this is, is this all the, no, let's see, the, it has no triple since 2010, it's decreased with the 2000 since 2010, the, the number of movies, the number of sh uh, TV shows is nearly tripled. Um, all right, so the, the um, is this all the movies that are available? Yeah, um, may, maybe, I, I don't know if somebody knows this from the, Documentation, we can see the documentation quickly. All right, looks like maybe it is. Some of the text-based features. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's see, yeah, let's see what um what we can learn from it. Okay, first I'm interested in the distribution of release years of both movies and TV. So I can histogram that bin width equals, I don't know, for every five years. Um, and uh, I can also say fill is type. What is it called? Uh, type. And we say, okay, most of the material is recent. Instead of fill type, maybe I do a facet wrap by type. And uh, and call is one for stacking them on top of each other. And uh, let's do scales free y. I'm just kind of curious, is there a difference in like the shift or something like that? Or right, maybe the, 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 I think, yeah, the TV shows are even more shifted recently than the movie, than the movies are. This isn't the perfect way to, uh, to tell that. I think the best way to do it might be something like to count decade is, uh, how do I do this? I do 10 times floor, no, um, 10 times release year, truncated division 10. And uh, type group, and then I can do it quickly. Uh, group by type percent is n over sum n, and do a uh, decade percent color equals type. Just trying to look at like some other ways we look at this distribution. This is very similar to the above graph. Basically, we see we have, we do have more movies uh, that are a little bit older. This was the TV shows are really overwhelmingly from the 2010 decade. And then of course, this is only like two years, 20, 2020 and part of 2021 in this most recent bucket. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's um, that's one way to look at it. If I change this for a moment from decade to every five years, do the conclusions change a lot? Well, we really see like, Chase, there's, that's so dramatic that I'm gonna try like every two years. And uh, just uh, 
this is like another way we could kind of see it where it's like, okay, uh, and this is the most recent uh, 2020, 2021. Uh, and that's so much that I just want to, I want to try it just based on, I don't really need decade amount. I'm, I'm going to do more interesting things with this. I just, I just wanted to get a sense of this, oh, account this and type. Yeah, I just kind of want to say like, okay, 2021, there's a breakdown, but like, yeah, TV shows, most TV shows came out in the last few years. All right, so that's the sign we're learning about, um, about release dates. Uh, we're learning about things like our right, country. I wonder, oh, listed in is going to be, I think, uh, interesting. That, based on the Kaggle description I saw, is going to be, oh, it's genres. I was kind of thinking maybe it would be countries that it's available in. Uh, and no, what I see is I see listed in. Horror movies, international movies. All right, so we definitely can do things with genres. We can do things with countries. We can do things with ratings. So right, we've done a couple of movie data sets. TVMA, TV14, TVBG. We've done things with uh, ratings, stuff like that. And uh, oh, I see one we might need to clean, and that's duration. So the this is kind of like all right. I I'm curious on the duration. Let's see if I if I took this data set and I said, let's see, separate duration uh, sep by, uh, the, if I said um, duration and unit, units, I wonder how, what it would, what it, how it would work out if I count units, it's always min, season, or seasons, okay, that's cool, um, and I can throw in a convert equals true, uh, and at which point Duration now gets a number, so that's handy because it um uh, this is the one I really care about, and I'll call this duration units. All right. What do I want to do that? Because I might want to know something like um well I might want to know our movies getting our movies getting longer over time. Uh, at least among the ones that in Netflix, I could filter for type is movie. Uh, and mutate decade is uh, or I'll just. Hmm. Yeah, I'll mute it by decade is uh, 10 times year. Now, mm, I'm, 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 I'm annoyed because the old decade is going to have very little data. And But uh, divided by 10, floor division, uh, release year, ggplot decade by, by duration. Um, I'm meant to do geom box plot, and I'm actually going to need, because decade is numeric, I'm going to need to add group equals decade. All right. So, yeah, so one thing is, like, the movies it has that are longer tend to be from the 60s. I know this was definitely an age of epics. I think Lawrence Arabia was in the 60s. Maybe, no, it might have been in the 50s. I can't remember. But mostly it's like, okay, the, you settle on this just short of 100, uh, of 100, of 100 um, minutes. And I could also ask questions like, you know, I could I could create a function called summarize movies. I just know that I'm gonna that I'm going to do this. Uh, where I want to take a table and by some groups summarize average um or summarize. What I'm gonna say? Uh, uh, sure, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it summarize movies just because I think. Hmm, it's not gonna be that interesting because I could do something like duration. Uh, average duration, but that's not that. It's not that interesting. No, I'm not going to create a function yet. Maybe I will later. Uh, and what I can do is I can say, I wonder something like Netflix titles. What if I uh, let's, let's look at let's look at genres. I'm still bouncing around a little bit, but let's look a little bit at genre. I can do separate listed in a uh, separate rows listed in, and say genre. Say separate rows listed in, and sep is um comma and now I can count these genres. Here we go and it looks like up oh, I have a space in these that looks good. Uh, so we say okay international movies, dramas, comedies, etc. And then I could group by the um, by listed in and ask something like summarize n is always good. I'm also going to arrange descending n and median duration median uh, duration uh, Duration, I'm going to need to filter, type, you know what, I'm going to do group by type and list it in, and I'm going to call it genre, it's listed in, and median duration is median of duration, how's that look, okay, the 
Hmm. Median is a bit funky when we're looking at uh, at like TV shows. They'll typically be like one season being the median makes a lot of sense. But yeah, so but I'll do I'll leave it here anyway, and then I'll add filter type is movie. Uh, I wonder is this too few? Is this too many movies? Mm, it's not really too many movies to do a, in a visualization. And I'll do something like uh, genre. No, I'll do median duration genre. Geom call, mm, geom call, geom point, movies is a category. Mm, that's a, that seems like a bad category with a median duration of forty four minutes. Uh, that doesn't look see that that looks a little off. Uh, I might even filter for duration. Sort of no for genre is not equal to movies, uh, but I'm also going to do genre is FCT reorder genre by median duration. Yeah, this is, I don't know, like stand-up comedy tends to, be, tends to be an hour and the others, and the classics tend to be longer, but mostly just kind of in the middle. Yeah, sure. Um, I can do more things on, on duration. I can do it, I can do the same thing by rating. See, there's where I might start, I could do something like, this is where I was starting to say, all right, summarize movies, or summarize titles, because it's both movies and, uh, and TV shows. I like to have something that grabs like uh, this kind of thing. You know, I'll even say median year is median of release year. I like to have this just so I can like aggregate these really quickly. And then I can see, get these and look at, and uh, if I'm curious, then like, like, are some of these more recent than others? Hmm. Okay, but the, um, uh, all right, but let's now look at, let's see. <sighs> Being about what to, uh, what to look at next. Uh, I, so I'm definitely gonna be doing some like tokenizing of descriptions and connecting uh, text to genres, things like that. Uh, well, I wonder how many, oh, I have a cast. Uh, yeah, you can find a lot of connections here. Um, oh, uh, date added. Here's a column we don't we that is not that um, uh, clean yet. Date added. Uh huh. What I'm going to do is add a step to our cleaning process. There's a function in Lubridate called uh, MDY that should parse this really nicely. I'll say date added. Turn this into a date at, into a date column. Okay, let's 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 ask about date added. So I'm curious, like uh, first, how many were added per year? This is not. It looks like we're probably missing ones yet. We're not going to have any that, that have been removed. Uh, so that that's a, a selection bias we have in this data. But I can start with something like count year added is year from Luber date of date added and. Uh, Filter not is in a year added. Um, date added. If not missing it, uh, and then I can say, oh, when not 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 a lot of movies in the states that have been around this far, which makes some sense because the streaming service. Only, I don't know when exactly the streaming service got introduced, but what were the first ones added? If I did um arrange year added, uh, arrange date added. First movies added that are still present, select, or first uh, titles added, type, title, and date added. Uh, all right, not, a, not an incredible set, not a really a very memorable set of TV shows or movies. These are ones that have been on for a really long time. Uh, I don't think I've seen any of these. So the um, Netflix type, okay. And something I might wanna know, I'm just noticing that like the ones that are still on, most of them were added in the last few years. So I'm not gonna get much from 2015 or before. What I'm gonna do is do mutate year added is year is P min, no, P max of year of date added and 2015. And I'm gonna group, I'm gonna count year added. And you know what, what am I gonna do genre? What am I gonna do this by? 
Heck, I'm gonna do it by rating. I don't know. I'm trying out a few ways, uh, hypotheses, like what has, oh no, I'm gonna start with type. I'm curious, like, has it, have we, we've seen that, that most of the TV shows it has are recent TV shows. Is that true of when things were added? Things were added in the last five years. Were they, um, uh, did they change in terms of type over time? What I'd want to do is do year added fill equals type. Oh, and uh, n fill equals type. Geom, we've done a lot of area plots recently. It's a good way to visualize this. Yeah, so um, most, so of course, not a lot of things added in 2021. We're only a part of the way through the year, and I'm not sure how recent this data is, but it's like, okay, mostly it's just been growing in both. Uh, could represent as a percentage. Don't know that I have to in this case. The next thing I'm going to add is rating. I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw in, throw this into our, into just in case I want to like, year added is year of date added. Just so I don't have to keep recreating it. Now if I do fill rating, has that distribution shifted? Well, now that I think of it, I'm definitely going to need to do some FCT lumping and do mutate. Oh, no, um, I can do it in the count. Rating is FCT lump of rating mm, top six. What do we think? Uh, and I'm going to do filter not is in a rating. So that doesn't get stuck inside. Yeah, so that this is... Oh, um, I neglected to do that step where I said year added is pmin, year added in 2015. I did pmin again. I meant to do pmax, where I want to say start our data in 2015 or before. Uh, all right, so the um, uh, is distribution changing? We'd have to change these to percentages to find out. So I'd change this to group by year added. This is a thing called a spinogram. Percent is n over sum of n. And we need a column call, and we can use percent. What I'm seeing, you know, I'm going to order these. I'm going to order these. You know, I should do these in movies and TV separately. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say group by type, mutate, rating is FCT lump, rating four. And then let's do the top four in each. And let's also throw in type. This is broken now. Uh, I think I mean, oh, because uh, he added type rating, type in year added, facet wrap by type. Some I may need to do a little bit more modification. No, this this one seemed to work out. Work out. Uh, all right. The um. So points out we probably should should uh, Charles points out we probably should filter out to, uh, 2021. But the um. Yeah, what we're seeing is, like, within movies, why do I only have this many? I grouped by type. One thing I don't understand is what happened to the rest of my ratings. I did FCT lump of rating four. I really expected them. Uh, uh, five, RPG 13. Where's my uh, where's my other movie ratings? Is what I don't understand. I grouped by type right here. Uh, am, am I missing something? If I filter for type is movie, that's odd. I'm getting TV fourteen, TV MA, TV PG among movies. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. If I say that might be a data problem. But it, it might be, it could be TV movies. Seems a bit odd. I think a lot, I think a lot of these are foreign movies. Uh, and their ratings. Okay, one possibility, what it's looking like here, maybe. It does look like a lot of these are, are foreign movies. Uh, yeah, it could just be that the, they use these like TV whatever ratings. Um, all right, worth knowing. Uh, it does mean this is a little. It isn't quite as like intuitive as I was I was expecting it to be. If I drop this, 
yeah, for whatever reason, we have these movies that were added that have TVMA, TV14, etc. Instead of the American, well, I guess, yeah, only, only American movies, I guess, would get R, PG-13, etc. Okay, now I think I understand a little, uh, a little bit better. Uh, question is, why use Pmax? Why not use a filter? I wanted to keep all the things before 2015 in the data set, but... Yeah, I don't know if that's the right choice. Let's try filter year. It's not going to make a big difference. Year added greater than or equal to 2015. So I see some shifts. It's more common for, for uh, this is maybe more, maybe there's more American movies getting added with, with R and PG-13 ratings and fewer, say, TVMA. Uh, I think it's a little hard to um, interpret this. Uh, so I'm going to keep on moving because, yeah, let's talk... Let's talk, let me see. I'm thinking about, oh, let's start with like, um, du let's talk duration and country. I haven't done much with country yet, so let's look a little bit at country. I'm still sort of getting a feel for what is exciting here, what is what is interesting. Um, if I do filter not is in a country, country, and let's throw in type, because we have movies and, and what if I did country, is FCT lump country six. Let's make it 10 or nine, so we have 10 total, including other. And we do uh, N country fill equals type, geom call, and I'm gonna throw in a country is FCT reorder country by N. Love this visual, this kind of visualization. Yeah, we can see something like what are the countries that contribute the most um, movies and TV shows to Netflix. I'm going to increase the, make that other a little bit, a little bit smaller. Yeah, there's a really a long tail. It looks like a lot of things that fall into um, other countries. One thing I can see is that most TV that there's some countries, oh, this is cool. There are some countries that are mostly uh, movies. Uh, India is almost entirely movies. Egypt is almost entirely movies. Then there's a few countries, Japan and South Korea, that are mostly TV shows, also Taiwan. Oh, you know, it's, it's almost like you could we could throw this under a map because it does feel like, no, not necessarily. Let me see, like Southeast Asia and Pacific Islands, like the Philippines and Indonesia that are all movies, but then we got Japan and South Korea and Taiwan that are all TV shows. That's a little, let me, let me make it a little longer to see other, is there anything else, any other trends you can see here. And Germany, like some TV shows, lots of movies. Okay, it's just interesting in terms of Netflix's content acquisition strategy. Uh, how has the, um, uh, you know, let me actually know. Let me ask now by, let's say, uh, duration and country, because that was kind of what, why I, what I started looking at here. Is if I did this and I say summarize, oh, uh, filter for, let's say, type equals, uh, yeah, let's filter for type is movie and summarize titles group by country. Remember I created that um, summarize titles uh, table and it, it's like, oh, okay, the most, wait, is this right? Yeah, no, yeah, this is right. The movies, most movies are from United States, then India, then United Kingdom, I didn't leave in the other here. And is there a difference in terms of duration? Yeah, it looks like there is. Wow, the movies in India are longer, Egypt are a little longer, Turkey and Philippines. I could do this in a visualization. If I did, it probably won't conference bounds. I think I quite need to, but it's just one that, that I noticed that um, United States, India, uh, United, United Kingdom and Canada are make longer movies. What about by rate? I see a question, which is, um, do R-rated movies come from specific countries? Or the countries where Netflix shows the harder stuff, you know, I don't think the I think these are the countries that the that the film was made or the TV show was made in, not where it's available. Am I missing? Can I find out where can I find out uh, where it's available? I'm not sure I, that anywhere it does have what countries this is shown in. If I if I looked for instance that description, is there some information there? I don't see anything. Nope. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing where they're shown, but I could see where they come from. Uh, there's TV. There's, uh, but then the other thing I saw is that that R rating was mostly from the United States. So if I did, for instance, filter rating equals R, that most of these movies are from the United States. 
most are, but that's true. That's true overall. And then it seems like some movies from UK, Canada, other English speaking countries uh, get counted in. I also see there are some that that are like joint uh, that are from multiple countries. Or are these? Uh, yeah, the no. I think I was just wondering for a second. Are these like what countries available? No, I don't. I think this is the country that it's that uh, of origin. We can actually check the documentation. Where's the documentation? Country of the movie show was produced. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. The um. But yeah. So so this is what R was. If I did, but I could say in R or TVMA. And now I do get ones in India, United Kingdom, etc. Uh, so that that covers what television shows, but probably also covers uh, movies that are only t uh, TV. Uh, all right. Let's um. Let's see. Oh, I'm kind of actually interested in ratings and. Oh, well, yeah. So let, let, let's let's ask the question about. So we looked at at duration. We saw that movies in India and Egypt are longer. Movies in the UK, US tend to be ninety minutes. Uh, what if I said let's look at rating and country? If I did, let's say mutate rating is FCT lump rating, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lump together TV and and um, movies. No, I'm not going to do that. What I'm actually going to do is something different. I'm going to do mutate group by country is FCT lump of country and do the top like nine countries and then summarize PCTR or MA because I, I don't want to distinguish between like R and MA and everything else. Oh, I'll do filter not is in a uh, rating and say mean rating in either R or TV MA. Those the right, uh, was it a, uh, yeah, R or TV MA? I think so. If I did, if I did count rating, I would see the, yep, R and TV MA. Okay. So I'll do this summary and do N equals N, arrange descending N, and we see, okay, like, are there some countries? All right, so like, India is only 25% mature rating, Japan 36%, Spain 82%. Oh, so we can see some, some neat uh, variations here. I wonder if I did group by both type and country, uh, and we throw in a drop the groupings uh, step here. Uh, United States, 50% of movies, 40% of TV shows are MA. Uh, whereas, um, Oh, I, I should get rid of country in a, yeah, filter not as in a rating, not as in a country. And throw in Spain. Yeah, are any of these really small numbers? Yes, some of them are. So I'm gonna do something nifty. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna actually compute confidence bounds for these. So what I'm gonna do is right now I've got the number that are n mature. I kind of want a visualization where I can say, are right, do some do movies that Netflix has in some countries are they more mature than others in terms of ratings? And again, I'm lumping together R and TVMA. Uh, are there any other mature ratings that I should include? Probably count uh, rating uh, TVMA. Uh, we also have no uh, NC seventeen, which is they don't really do anymore. But or they do, but it looks like Netflix is most doesn't show it. Uh, worth throwing in, not rated, could may or may not be uh, mature, but I'll I'll skip it. Uh, all right. So the the reason I did N uh, over these is that I can do something cool. I can say PC key mature as M mature for N, but I can do something else. I can actually get confidence bounds. Who's seen this trick before? To get a confidence bound, a lower confidence bound from um, and out of uh, PC temperature, I can do Q beta, and then let me see if I can get this right. 0.025, I want 95% confidence bound, um, N plus 0.5, and then N mature minus N, oh, nope, other way around, N mature, and, and minus and mature number positive, number negative, both adding 0.5. This is what's called a Jeffrey's confidence interval. Q beta is a quantile of the beta distribution. And this trick is nice because it gets me, uh, I could have used prop.test, I guess. But this is, oops, uh, change it to 975. This is a trick for getting um, confidence bounds 
that um, uh, in terms of like, okay, I, th I think the average is 50%. What are the low and high uh, intervals? These Some number is wrong here. Oh, uh, this should be some. Much better. Okay. Now I have confidence bounds. And now that I have them, I see that, that a lot of them are pretty wide. But the, um, yeah, uh, there's one there. Uh, it's, um, and now what I, what I can do is I can say by PCT mature, by country, geom point size equals n. So I can get uh, points on each of these, color equals type, geom error bar, I no longer need to do error bar h because I can use x min and y min. x min is conf low, x max is conf high. Error bar works for those now. Uh, I don't know how for how long. Yeah, so so this and this tells us a little bit here is we can say and I can do scale x continuous labels equals percent. And while I'm at it, I might I don't really need to expand to zero. I'm not gonna expand to zero. There's no reason to believe zero is that special, but I'm going to. I'm gonna say expand limits x equals zero. Uh, so the um so we can say it's like okay, South Korea and then uh, so so what, what countries have the percentage percentage of films that are R or TVMA? Okay, percent of, of work titles that are R TVMA. In terms of the content that Netflix has, Spain, largely mature content. South Korea, the movies are mostly uh, mature. The, the, uh, the TV show is basically down the line. Egypt may be a little bit under. Canada kind of split. Generally, movies are more likely to be rated R than TV shows are to be rated TVMA. Uh, that's how you can see in mo in, across most of these. Last thing is I want these to look a little less like TIE Fighters, so height. Now, I had a question from uh, Chanini, which is a perfect question. Is it possible to see models modeling with description? I agree. I'm really excited about doing some modeling here. The, um, the model that... that we're going to turn this into a prediction problem, and I'm thinking about um, some of the things we can predict. We could predict, uh, just for fun, we could predict what's the probability something's mature. Now, we, So if I had a, like a rating, I'd predict good or bad. We've done that on IMDb before. Here, we don't have good or bad. We have, um, uh, we have their rating. We have their date added. I'm not going to predict what year they were added. I don't think that's, that's exciting. I could predict duration. Yeah, so I've actually got two things I could predict. Hmm. I'm going to start by predicting rating because I think it's going to be fun to predict, to see like what words, genres, or other things predict rating. Uh, I, I haven't looked at, at, at genre yet. We certainly can. But yeah, let's get to, a, let's get to some predictive models. I, I think it sounds uh, awesome. So let's do some, um, some text mining. First, I want to do not is in a description. I, I, think, I, th I think I saw some of them were null. No, maybe none of them were. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up tidy text. For more on tidy text, see the book, public, uh, Text Mining in R, published by myself and Julia Silgi. The uh, unnest tokens, word description. Count word. What are the most common words in description, in, in uh, title, in uh, descriptions? Real boring. Look at that, look at that boring stuff. But I can join with a pre-set up set of stop words from tidy text. And now if I count them, at least a little more interesting. Life, family, world, love, woman, friends, series, documentary, school, home, etc. All right, so we um, I can start with something small, like what is the difference between movies and TV shows? Uh, so if I did title and word, and uh, then I can, sp or I, oops, I meant to do type and word. Then I can spread the word by n, fill equals zero. Whoops, that's too big. I meant to do spread type and word after doing type is, uh, um, uh, how am I gonna do this? I can do snake, I can actually use the snake case package. Uh, library snake case, I like using snake case for this. Snake case, there it goes, two snake case, right, uh, type, what about like a snake case? Mixed movie and TV show. Uh, so then I could do something like movie plus TV show, arrange descending total, head 20, uh, take the top 100 in terms of the word here total, and then I can start doing something like movie by TV show, 
What words appear in one but not in others? I'll need, uh, I just kind of got a scatter plot in mind that is going to have x axis on x log scales on both axes. Label equals title. Uh, oh, it's a uh, geom text text. No, label is right, and word is the word I was looking for, not title. Uh, this is not that exciting. The, the problem that I have here is I'm actually doing this based on um, totals, and that's kind of cutting this off in a funny way. This is the wrong way. Now that I just thought of it to ask what, what words are more common. And what, so I can see, for example, series is much more common in TV shows. I would want to go through a little bit more. Um, like This is not quite the way to look at this. Why do I say that? Because here we go. Uh, uh, words. Oh, um, uh, nested there's a package for this actually tidy lo for tidy log odds if I want to compare between these two sets you've seen me use this before it's, it's a package by Julia Silvi and the um and if I do words unnested and bind tight oh no I'll need to do first count type and word, and then I do bind log odds where the set is type and the feature is word. I get a, oop, and I need to have n. I get to know the, what what is the relative ratio? Uh, so like if I do a range descending log odds weighted, I can find out that, okay, by far the, mo the word that most appears in TV shows is series, but also adventures and world and docu-series. This, makes a, this uh, honestly makes a whole lot of sense, uh, whereas words that appear more often in movie uh, include performance. So we can, um, we can visualize this by saying group by type. The log odds ratio would be like the um, log how frequent is it in, in TV show versus how frequent is it in movie. So, the, um, uh, so I can group by type top n. 10 by log odds weighted, top 10 in each, type uh, and ungroup, type uh, and uh, log odds weighted, I meant to do word and log odds weighted, geom call, gonna need a little bit more effort than this. You see me, I've done the same analysis, for example, comparing Taylor Swift and Beyonce. The uh, scales equals free Y. Here we go. What words are most overrepresented in TV series or in movies? And we can see things like uh, TV show, series, adventures, world, docu-series, friends, Movies, performance, concert, uh, bride, stuck. You know what's actually interesting I can see here? Things that describe situations like friends uh, popping up in movies, whereas things that appear, that suggest that are like a situation like stuck uh, makes, that does make a little bit of sense to me. Um, but that, that, that's one uh, quick look. But, but uh, what, what we might be interested also is, I see a question from, um, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name from uh, Zhao, uh, which is what if we did clustering? So this is a cool idea. What if I did, here we go, we take our words and nested. And I want to know what words tend to appear with other words. You can do that with a, with a YDR package. You, uh, if you've been watching for a while, you've probably seen me do this. First thing I want to remove the really rare words. Uh, uh, name is word total. I'm also, I'm actually going to first distinct by type, title, and word. And then I'm going to add count to word. So future occurs 98 times, but slums occurs only 8. I'm going to say word total must happen at least 20 times. Just get this data set a bit smaller. And what's great about YDR is now I can say what words often appear with other words. So among those that, that appear in at least 20 titles. And now I can do... <clears throat> uh, thinking for uh, just one heartbeat about, about this, it would be FCT... Uh, Oh, sorry, no, it would be um, pairwise, 
core uh, of um, of word by title. Say Kong and Hong tend to appear together. All right, no surprise, no surprises there. Middle and aged and martial and arts. Uh, we're seeing pairs of words that often appear together. I could say something now. I could take this, and uh, for one thing, I might want to find something out. I want to find out. I don't know. I like. Um, uh, okay. Well, what do I like? I let's say I like um, mobs, uh, gangster, like mobster movies. I could ask what words tend to appear with mobster. Mobsters appear twenty times. Matter of luck. What if I say I like crime movies? What two words tend to appear with crime? Corruption, fighting, boss, lord, framed. That's pretty nifty. Uh, what if I just wanted like a visualization of uh, what words tend to occur together? I could uh, I could instead take this and say filter. Uh, thanks. Yes. Um, that I can take I can take this and say correlation is greater than let's say 0.1. How many connections is that? Too too low. Correlation greater than 0.2. Let me up this a little bit, the threshold for a word being included. And now I've got this data set that I can use, um, uh, I can turn into a graph. So I'm going to use library tidy graph and library ggraph and uh, take these correlations. And I actually use a different tool. I use graph. I think I can get this from tidy graph, but I still out of habit use this graph and data frame one. And I can say ggraph geom no uh, edge link. You've seen me do this before. Geom node point uh, as alpha equals correlation and layout equals fr, which uh, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's a it's um, one I tend to use for these visualizations. Let me decrease the correlation threshold a little bit. Uh, all right, so this is trying to get some like constellations of uh, what words tend to appear together, what tend, tends to be clustered. And once I've done this, I can say um, geom node lab uh, la text label equals name. V just one. Eight. Actually, let me try repel equals. You know, let me turn up the threshold a little bit. Check overlap equals true. This is usually something that takes a little bit of experimentation. I'm going to drop the legend position. I'm also going to set the seed so that it's the same each time I look at it. All right, so we're starting to see, this is, um, oh, did I do VG? Oh, I didn't. Uh, You know, let's try repel equals true. See how this looks. Ah, not too bad. So this is looking like a cluster. And what what are genres can we start to see? Talented, aspiring singer, fame, rise, fall, love. It's a whole that's a whole story there, uh, for sure. Um, tour scenes for there's a documentary cluster. We can see a crew, space, earth cluster, uh, and so on. You know, what's interesting is we actually, um, another way to, to do this is we actually have the genres. So we can look at what words are particularly common with genres. Ooh, there's a, a question of why pairwise core with word and title and not type. Uh, oh, I didn't, I wanted to say, um, uh, I didn't want to say what was the difference between the types. This was just looking at what words appear together in descriptions. So I'm clustering what words appear together in descriptions. But let's actually do this by genre. So this is like, it's cool. It's it's I can explore it. Uh, and some other visual, mom, single, mother, daughter. But actually, I'm starting to see boss, crime, corruption, government, police. I'm seeing genres here. I want to see that. Ex I want to know that explicitly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our words unnested. Um, and I'm actually going to unnest it even farther. I'm going to separate it by genre. So do, um, remember I've got this separate uh, rows of listed in. And uh, I'm going to rename it to genre. And count genre and word. We, yeah, count genre. Um, mm. First thing, a distinct type title word. So it only occurs once. Oh, nope, I, I want that before the genre. 
First, I do it only that only each word only gets occurs once. Then I oh, uh, and uh, genre. I have to throw this in. First, I make sure each one of these titles appears only once for only once for each word. So if a word pops up four times, I'm not going to be in the data set. Then I separate out our genres. I don't need this next step anymore. Uh, oh, yeah. Set equals. Here we go. Now I separate out the genres by, by uh, now I've got future across all three of these. And now I actually can use that tidy, uh, now I count genre and word. And now I can get those log odds in a really interesting way. I can say, what are words that are very specific to this genre? I might also want to do mutate genre or just remove the, the rare genres. Filter, FCT, lump of genre. Oh, I need this after the separate rows. Top 10 is not equal to other. This line I, I do when I just want to like remove the rare ones. Now I count genre and word. Let's make it nine because then it'll be great when I look on it on a facet. And now instead of doing it by type, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do these words by genre. So I can now do a bind uh, bind log odds with genre being the set and word being the feature and then n. And now this, I can say for every one of these words, for every one of these genres, how frequent, much more frequent is it than the overall rate? So 007 is more common in action adventure than we've expected by, um, by chance. Having said that, I probably only want these for fairly common ones. Uh, so I'm only fairly common words. So I am gonna do add count word. This is the number of distinct movies it occurs in. Word total is greater than, I don't know, 50. I'll try to make this a little more. Yeah, let's do 25. I'm kind of just experimenting around. But the idea is I'm saying, okay, only things that are across all genres happen at least 25 times. Uh, I didn't want, I don't know, I go with too many like really rare words. So now I can call this word genre log odds. I'm finding some links between words and genres. I can take this and visualize group by within every genre. Uh, group by genre, no, um, no, I'm gonna, yes, sorry, yes. Group by genre, top n log odds weighted, top not, uh, 10 within each. Good, I have 90, it's 10, 10 from each of these genres. And, and do, um, uh, now I do ungroup, tidy text has as reorder within, I can say word is reorder within, word by log odds weighted within genre. I want it reordered within every one of these and, and that matches up with scale y um, reordered because I'm gonna need to do log odds weighted word gym call facet wrap by genre. And really important that I forgot to do is scales free y. That's why this is taking a long time to render. Otherwise every word would show up in every one. So this is a question of what words tend to be specific to what genres. Clean this up a tiny bit before we look at it. Uh, log odds. Oops. This is pretty nifty. Uh, I don't need this. And I'm going to throw something and I'm going to say no legend and fill equal genre. I like how it looks. What do I learn from this? It's very easy to tell documentaries. Documentary interviews, examines, footage, all are terms that are much more common documentaries than everything else. Uh, action adventure, you can see words like protect, action, squad, rescue, terrorist. Ooh, this is probably, this is what I'm going to build. I can build a, a genre identifier. Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So the, um, I could do a rating identifier. No, huh, let's, maybe let's do a rating identifier. Let's, let's think about that for a second. But yeah, the, um, uh, dramas, independent movies, international movies, etc. Uh, okay. And yeah, TV dramas, chronicles. Yeah, we can see like the things that, that show up in TV dramas, chronicles, thriller, protect, protect appears in multiple, yeah. Um, all right, so these are some things that are like uh, specific. All right, 
Question from Morgan. Is there a way to uh, filter pairs of words grouped together like New York and car accident? Uh, one way is you can tokenize by bi I'm not going to do it right now, but you can tokenize by bigrams using um, unnest tokens. Uh, if you say n equals, uh, if you do use, um, where is, does it pop up here? Here it is. Unnest tokens ngram, token equals ngrams. Uh, and they do like n equals 2, n equals 3, we could tokenize uh, uh, adjacent words, not just words that appear in the same passage. That's one way to start going down that path. Let's build a, let's build a lasso regression. I've done this in a few other screencasts, and I think it's a really fun thing to do. Let's predict whether a movie is to be fun. Let's predict whether something has a mature rating, an R or TVMA rating, based on, say, the words that it uses. Uh, all right, so if I look at words on nested, and I select... Uh, and I let's do um, distinct type title. I'm starting just with type title rating and word. Uh, let's start with that. So word, uh, and let's make it a count if the word appears multiple times. So words and ratings. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, then I'll do. Uh, all right. The other thing I actually should have checked was: Are there multiple count? No, there are not. There are no duplicate titles. I guess there are. They they have some way of deduplicating them. Uh, all right, that's good. That's good to know. All right. So the and you know, let me. I'll say I could make it simple. No, let me. All right. Yeah. So let me let me add one column. It's called like mature is rating in TV MA R or NC seventeen, and I'll do filter not is in a rating. This would be the data set that we want. Let's say we want to just do a, a prediction of, based on whether a word occurs or doesn't, does it have, um, it, does it get a mature rating? Uh, so I can mention things like documentaries probably rarely get mature ratings, but other ones I can mention, certainly can mention with terms like sex or terms around violence would, um, would tend to appear in mature ones. So I'm a little curious what we, what we would find from this. And uh, I'm gonna use, you know, I, sometimes I use the, the tidy models uh, collection of tools, but today I'm gonna use GLM net. Um, because the, uh, and I use tidy text has this uh, function I really like. I'm going to take our word ratings and oops, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to do add count word, uh, and I did this before, but word total. Let's say you must appear in, let's start with you must appear in at least 30, and we work our way down from there. Uh, I don't want to include anything that, it, that doesn't occur, any words that don't occur in at least 30 movies. So I take that this and this. What the way I get to work with GLM net is I would cast sparse, uh, where each row is a title, each column is a word, and the value. Let's start with the value being uh, the number of times it occurs. So the um, so if, if it occurs multiple times, we'll get, it'll get multiple points. So this will be a spar uh, word word matrix. This we call like a document term matrix, and it'll be. 566 words, those are the words that occurred at least 30 times across everything, 7,748 um, movies. Did we lose any in that filter? Any that didn't? We lost only a handful. Those are ones that didn't have any words that didn't occur at least 30 times. I'm going to go ahead and let them go. But the question that we have is, um, uh, is, is what are words that predict uh, that, a, that a show is mature? So then what I'd say is, we're, uh, this is the part that, that always bugs me a little bit, is I need to do row names of this. Uh, I don't quite, I don't have like a super easy way to do this. I just say to match these row names up to the word rating, uh, up to the first time they occur in terms of the title. And then, or I can actually just do Netflix titles and then subset them. Oh, um, actually no, I need, I need to do it on a word, on word ratings title word ratings mature. So this is some non tidy verse tool where it say match the row names to the title, use that. So that's my like my why, my thing I'm gonna predict, which is uh, trues and falses uh, for each whether or not it's mature. So uh, this is the step, I wish there were a more elegant way to do this, just as a quick thought. Uh, if someone knows one, let me know. But the way that I would go about doing this is saying the, um, the uh, let's predict with cross validation cvglmnet the word matrix y uh, and the family is binomial. Am I forgetting anything here? 
Uh, fam yep, the, uh, quickly remind us, yeah, uh, family binomial, um, and, uh, applying a lasso regression model. And, uh, yeah, so this is a, uh, uh, CVG laminet, and I can actually say, did this work just in terms of, uh, so what this is doing is fitting a model with a linear term for each of these words, uh, to predict yes or no, does it, um, end up being, um, uh, is it, is it mature? What is this? This is showing as my penalty parameter changes. At a very large penalty parameter, I'm, all the coefficients get driven to zero. At a very small penalty parameter, we're, we're approaching linear regression, and we start overfitting because we have 566 predictors here. We're going to overfit if we try that many. But here's that sweet spot where we set a lambda that, that's, um, that uh, pushes our error down. Uh, and what I can do is I can take that, mo uh, that mod... Uh, glmnet fit, that, that giant thing, and pass it to Broom's tidy function. And do tidy. And now I've got the terms so we can see if we needed, if we only had one, okay, comedian and stand, probably stand up, are two of the terms that most push, especially at yeah, stand, most push things to actually mature. That makes sense. Comedy routines makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, so we can say, uh, but I can do this and filter just for the term lambda is mod lambda. Let's do lambda within one. This is that choice of parameter lambda within one standard deviation at the bottom. And now I've got a bunch of terms that are positive or negative. The word estranged makes somewhat makes a, a, a title more likely to be rated mature. The word government less likely to be mature. Uh, so let me actually, so let, let's, uh, let's try visualizing the top terms. So what I do is I say top n estimate, uh, oh, absolute value of estimate. Uh, and let's visualize uh, estimate term, what terms are, are most strongly predictive? I think maybe it's the geom call. And let me do a little reordering. You've seen me make this graph before if you've been watching for a while. It's a really neat, neat graph where we say what, and that's why I love about a linear model. It's just so interpretable. Horror, drug, comedian, stand, comic, gay, Paris, sex, 1980s, violent and terrifying. Oof, yes, that definitely sounds like something you don't want to show your, uh, your eight-year-old potentially. But magical, animated, magic, adventures, monsters, compete, science, scientists, creatures. Compete is probably a story about like documentaries uh, and, uh, or, or reality shows. And um, uh, which which you're unlikely to get a, a mature rating. And yeah, we can see these are the side that are like um, so. We see things maybe that are maybe that are for kids. Documentaries could be scientists. Creatures could too. Let me add a couple more. This is pretty cool. What words are most predict most and least predictive of being? Um, oh man, murder, French prison, hits, violence online, brutal, uh, thriller, Spain. Uh, we saw before that Spain tended to be more um, uh, mature than other uh, movies from. Spain and mature, in turn, in movies from India, less likely. So this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, if you stay for five minutes, I'm going to show one other, one other trick here, which I really like about, about the log, log um, rating, is that I, I've got these words, but I could also bring in other features. I've done this um, in a couple of other ones. If I want to say, let's predict if something is um, mature or not, I could bring in other features like... Uh, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to move this. I'm going to move this mature step up to the filter. I'm oh, sorry, up to the cleaning so that I can just work with it. Uh, oh. Netflix titles. And I've got my word ratings, but yeah, I've got this. I don't need. Let me see. Yep. And now my my matching still works the same way. Okay. Why am I doing this? Because I actually wanted to add a couple more features. Uh, and what I'm going to add is uh, is take our our um our original Netflix titles. and 
listed in. Are these all? Ah, yes, they're comma space separated. So now I can do, the great thing is now I can do gather and I'm going to do genre. Gather type, uh, a feature type feature by a uh, director cast and, and genre. And, but I'm still going to have, this is going to be multiple until I do filter not is in a feature. It's still going to be multiple within each, but not for long, because I do separate rows, feature, sep is comma space. And now I've got, and finally I do unite. Uh, so the unite feature type, is a lightning round right at the end, uh, unite feature and feature type separated by, let's say, colon space. Uh, uh, sep is these. So it's like director this, director this. Um, and uh, and so on. Now it's like director, cast, and genre. And uh, yeah, I'm going to throw in one more thing where I say feature type is string to title feature type because I want capitalized. All right. And uh, and one more. Th and then I take this. And this is my other features besides description. And I've tokenized them. I've got them in in this format. Title feature, okay, and I do mutate feature on this one. Feature on the words, I do paste word. Uh, oh, and uh, let me throw in add count feature. Uh, name is feature count filter. Don't include anything that's really rare. Actually, that that I probably need a, a higher threshold than that because some directors aren't going to have a lot. Most directors aren't going to have more than ten. Uh, okay, so the um and now I say field uh based I'm going to combine this with the other features. Now that I've got this, I can do count feature. I say what are like the most common features? Genre to national movies description. Uh, let why are the two spaces here? Oh, uh, yeah, because it adds space. Um, and now I've got my common features, and I can uh, I can I can cast that I can sparse that out. Oops, I yeah no wait. No, this is too. This didn't work because bind rows any features features doesn't have quite enough. Uh, I would have expected mm, maybe the problem is my my filter here was too high. Why do I say it didn't work? Because the, the matrix didn't get any bigger. Uh, oh, there it is. I needed to do it as feature. That's way bigger. I'm going to turn this threshold back up. I'm just kind of playing around with it, experimenting. And the source, yeah, we have 900, now I have 924 features. And the point is, I threw all these into a bucket, and uh, I've still got, I've got my, my, I'm going to call this a feature matrix. Feature matrix. Oops, I did on word matrix again. Feature matrix. Uh huh. Did I have something missing? Um, one second. Oh yeah, the n. The n is no good. Uh, I'm gonna leave it binary. When I do cast sparse without an n, I leave it like a yes or no. Does it include it? Not how many times does it occur? Um, looking at like what I'm popping up here it's like yeah we're getting a binary matrix now with each row is a feature okay I need to fix some of that up now the question is I've doubled the, the number of features here and uh, but I still get a lot of success out of setting out of set, if I can set some lambda I can still get a, a good predictor out of this so let's uh, yeah let's find out what are the top terms these are terms that make things more or less likely to be rated mature. So one thing that's clear is that, okay, things that contain that are kids TV, children, family movies, faith and spirituality must less likely to be rated mature. But also we see some cast members. We see over genre movies, as we saw, that was kind of a junk one. Uh, we do see some descriptions pop up, uh, but I'm actually going to split out. Yeah, I've got this. This is pretty good, but I'm actually going to separate out. When I once after tidying it, I'm going to separate back out the feature from the feature type. Using that that uh, colon space. 
uh, and it's actually called term. And I'm going to say feature I wonder where was uh, I got some missing values. I don't know where those what happened that quite how what happened there. But um, oh, I see missing. Hmm. Oh. Well, the um, uh, yeah, this is I think I, oh yeah. So this we can see like okay, some genres pop up, but also some cast members in each direction. You know, I did throw in country. Let's throw country in real quickly because I think that's a lot of what we're seeing in this actor. Is they see some like um some foreign names that could really, really they're representing like India is less likely or Spain is more likely. Um, so if I throw in country, now I've just added it as a feature. This is what I love about this. I I, I just like threw in all those terms and now we got those in the bucket. Not keeping my intermediate models, which is not good uh, hygiene for fitting lasso, but you know, if you, if you see my, um, my board games, uh, uh, visual, uh, screencast, they do some very similar things. Here we go. Okay. So here I can see like, okay, there are genres, there are countries. Uh, what are things that tend to be, um, in one direction, like John Paul Tremblay or stand-up comedy, a couple names, uh, Spain is much driven in this direction. We see words like drug it's just a mix of like here is the 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 feature and here's the um the feature type that is pretty cool uh i'm gonna clean this up so we can say um how much does this question there um coefficient does this title more likely to be tv ma or r And uh, why this? All right, that's fun. I've done. I yeah. This is like a, that's what I love about like legit lasso models. We can get a really quick interpretation. And um, yeah, see like okay, science, nature, TV, Samuel West, David Attenborough, things driving documentaries and such. Much less likely. We can see. We can actually see that the effects that, and then. No surprise that kids TV children family was very very strong. Yeah, uh, you know what's interesting is I would have expected horror to be born up. Oh, here is horror TV horror and horror as a word that shifts in the in the positive direction. So we do see some of the these. Uh, but yeah, that that's um, I think that's uh, that's pretty interesting. We can, and we can really pull out of this like here are the actors, here are the anything that that go in either direction. All right, that's it for today. If you um. Uh, all right, let, let's take a quick look through with the stuff that we did. We looked at, um, at uh, I, looked, I did a lot of this exploration, like, okay, when did these movies get released? They didn't look at, has duration changed over time? I looked a little bit at some, at some things like, um, dura at duration by genre, um, and the, uh, the data, added a bit, but I think I ended up getting a little bit interested in the rating, which is why we ended up focusing on it, uh, later, later on. The, um... Uh, we eventually got to, to the question of looking at, um, and this was a question of rating by country. So we learned a neat trick of getting confidence lower and upper bounds, it's called the Jeffrey's confidence interval. Uh, and we were able to kind of see this, um, uh, oh, this should have been width now that I think of it. That's the one. Yes. Now we're we able to tie fighters. Um, and yeah, we, we see these differences. Uh, then I finally did some um, unnest tokens. Used um, also used Julia Silky's uh, tidy yellow package to get log odds. The um, uh, pulled these out. So are like uh, words that are more indicative of uh, movies or TV shows, and then later movie words that tend to appear together. Get and that gave me kind of the idea of I really was curious about genres and words, and I used word genre log odds as a separate visualization. My network's not showing up, but you saw it earlier. The um, and then finally, the really the the nifty thing we did was join to get was tokenize the words, tokenize the directors, the cast, the genre, the country, uh, put them all together into a bag and find out what are things that made a a movie a um title a t movie or TV show more likely to be rated R slash TVMA and get some kind of interpretable visualization uh, interpretable visualization of that. All right. Uh, I, um, I, uh, uh, if you like this, please do remember to like and subscribe. I hope you had fun. I certainly did. I'll see you next week.